we are a sustainability platform for banks and payment providers. And the end goal of us is we want to empower any consumer in anywhere in the world when they make a transaction or have an interaction around a transaction, use that as a force for good. So we've built a plugin platform that any financial service institution, any bank, any payment provider, any retailer, any football club, anyone in the world can plug us in and start to empower their end consumers to understand their impact and then make some good choices that choose better. And then if you are going to go and buy something, you can choose to compensate whilst you're doing it or use that as an opportunity to fund lion conservation in Africa or prevent plastic from entering the ocean in Bali, whatever that might be. But use the interaction as a trigger for something good. Because that's what we're all about. We're trying to use those 2 trillion payment interactions around the digital experience around the world. What an opportunity to just try and use as a force for good, do something good when you're doing this thing for you, whatever it might be. And that's all we're here to do. So we're here to empower those transactions through everyone else who already has their customers. Welcome back to Purpose Driven Fintech. I am your host, Moni Millares. In today's episode, we speak with Oli Cook, CEO and co-founder of ECHO, the multi-award winning sustainability platform for banks and payments. ECHO's solution allows you to make any transaction or customer interaction an opportunity to do good for the planet and your business. We discuss how we should understand sustainability first and then think of how fintech can be part of the solution, not the other way around. We talk about how ECHO is a positivity-driven fintech and I love that idea. We talk what is sustainability, sustainability and impact, sustainability lessons from Europe to be aware of in Asia, the amazing Planet Saver account, and so much, much more. If you enjoyed this pod, please subscribe in YouTube, follow on Spotify, and leave a five-star rating. Remember to connect on LinkedIn to keep the conversation going. Only it is an absolute pleasure having you in the show. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Delighted to be here. Likewise. So before we get started, just for full disclosure, Only and I used to work together maybe, I don't know, nine years ago, a long time ago in tandem, many years ago. But one of the things that I remember about him, like when we first met, I was like, oh yeah, Oli is the guy who spent some time in Africa before coming back to work. I should do that one day. <laughs> so that's my memory of Bali. We were both in the product team starting one of the first challenger banks in the UK back then. And now, see, like... Now the fintech Bali, seems huge. Yeah. Yeah. It'll sure. be now runs Echo and I'm really looking forward for, to this conversation. So before we go into it properly, sustainability is a very relevant topic. It's been a very relevant topic, but now it's becoming a critical topic. Yeah. Hence, this conversation is super, super relevant. So I want to start with how can we build more purpose-driven fintechs? Yeah, great question. Sustainability is, I can't, but my, my general view is it's now a, you must be in the space and you must be doing something, otherwise you will lose as a business in the future. How can we build more? I think it probably, for me, it comes down to how we started Echo in the first place, which was talking about sustainability, not about fintech. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking about the broader problem. And then it rolls into fintech could be doing an incredible opportunity here because there's a space to connect fintech and financial services to consumers. No one's really helping that. Happen. Oh, maybe we can build Echo and, and do that and be that facilitator in the market. So that's why we built Echo. But generally, more across the board, talking about the problems and openly discussing an in industry, the problem, and maybe fintech's the right answer. Maybe it's not the right answer. Maybe it's something entirely different. But just think about the problem. And then if there's a fintech solution to it, which there often is, we should start building those businesses to help solve the bigger problem than a fintech that's purposed on XYZ. So then tell us more about Echo. What's your purpose and what do you do? Yeah, so what do we do? We are a sustainability platform for banks and payment providers. And the end goal of us is we want to empower any consumer in anywhere in the world when they make a transaction or have an interaction around a transaction, use that as a force for good. So we've built a plugin platform that any financial service institution, any bank, any payment provider, any retailer, any football club, anyone in the world can plug us in 
and start to empower their end consumers to understand their impact and then make some good choices, choose better. And then if you are going to go and buy something, you can choose to compensate whilst you're doing it or use that as an opportunity to fund lion conservation in Africa or prevent plastic from entering the ocean in Bali, whatever that might be. To use the interaction as a trigger for something good to happen. Because that's what we're all about. We're trying to use, there's 2 trillion payment interactions around the digital experience around the world. What an opportunity to just try and use as a force for good, do something good when you're doing this thing for you, whatever it might be. And that's all we're here to do. So we're here to empower those transactions through everyone else who already has the customers. I like that. But I want to get deeper in your brain because as nascent, as, well, quote unquote nascent, as sustainability is, there's still, there's many players in the fintech industry doing similar to what you do. So what was your hypothesis? What made you think, hey, it's my hypothesis behind Echo that makes us think that we can do something different than the other guys doing the same thing. Yeah, and there's more, and I have two views in it. One is the more the better, because the problem we're solving isn't how to make Echo massive. Well, that's one of our challenges. It's the, we're here to do the thing sustainability for the world and actually the more people doing this the better the game is the better everyone is that's good for the world specifically about us though we think about it in a few different ways one is we need to start empowering people with information so there's quite a few people doing information in terms of carbon footprint that's that's going to be table stakes for everyone doing a transaction everywhere in the world i think over the next kind of few years that's just everyone then we more generally do the so what so how do we carbon compensate how can we use a transaction to fund lion conservation that you care about because you have a personal passion about lions or elephant whatever it might be or from plastic from the ocean because you as an end consumer or as a business really care about that issue because it's relevant to you. So some sports clubs, for example, really care about plastic because it's really prevalent in their industry. And how can we help them encourage that kind of behavior to prevent plastic from the ocean through transactions that happen in a football club or whatever. For us, it's about how can we combine those two things together? So not just the so what and not just the knowledge, but combine those two things together to make it really tangible consumer. The other part of it that we think about is positivity around sustainability. So you've got to feel good about doing good. The way to do more of the same habit is feel good about it. And it's the same way we think about it or gym or when I go running on my Strava, it encouraged me to say, well done, Ollie, you beat your PB in this tiny little segment of a little bit of a race. Feel good about that. It works. It works. It works really well. Yeah. It really does. But what it didn't do is I didn't go running for the last five days because of, I couldn't remember that. I didn't get an alert saying, Ollie get off your ass. Sorry, she said. Ollie, get off, go and do some running because that's not the way to encourage me because I'll turn that app off and I'll say, you know, I can make my own choices. So we think about positivity, like how can I make you feel good about doing good? Because then you'll do more, then you'll tell more people, then you'll engage with more. That's the thing, a really interesting space to get into, which we spend a lot of time thinking about. How can I make you feel good about the good thing you've just done? I like that. It's the first time that I hear the concept of positivity applied in fintech. And yeah the element of emotion embedded in the core of who you are as such. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Not who you are. You want to do stuff in this space, consumer, business, corporate, wherever it might be, because you actually care. It's like deep down, it's way bigger than I care about my job. It's way bigger than I care about it. Like society, I care. And that's a very human conversation, a very human level. Mm -hmm. And how would you use FinTech to create that human connection? I think really interesting. Yeah. So if we step back. What's your definition of sustainability? Sustainability. There's a whole variety of ways to look at it. I think for me, it's about being conscious of what you're doing and making sure you're making the right choices. So I've seen a quote before, which is sustainability is an outcome of conscious decisioning. Okay. So in the way that you know what you're doing, and you're behaving in the right way. Because you can take it in lots of different ways about, talk about a carbon footprint, you talk about a biodiversity impact, about lots of different things. The way we think about sustainability is just, empowering you to understand what you're doing and really engage in that and make that decision that is right for you. I think that's it's not about perfect. Ideally, everyone's perfect, but in reality, we're not all perfect. But just understand it and engage in it and make a conscious decision. That'd be the first step. Awesome. And then if we come back to impact and then yeah. basically we have sustainability on one side, and then at the same time, we have like big worldwide problem statements. On one side, we have uh, three quarters of adults are still underbanked or unbanked. And 
as of today, we produce about 6 billion plastic card payments per year. That is just insane. So how do you, can you go deeper on how does Echo have impact on customers' financial lives as such? Yeah, it's crazy that plastic, isn't it? it is, it's a shocking statistic when you think about it. So we get more into the, every transaction, everything you do generally has an impact because that's just the way of the world, right? So let's say we're going out for coffee into in coffee shop A, coffee shop B. The reality is you are going to go out for coffee because you're out there, you're meeting someone for a coffee. That happen. What we want to do is help you choose between coffee shop A and coffee shop B. Coffee shop A is really on top of it, has a really good sustainability agenda, has really driven down all of their impact throughout their supply chain scope, one, two, and three. Go coffee shop B, so I haven't done any of it. What we'd really like to do is help encourage you so that when you come outside and you're in the high street and look at those two coffee shops, you go to coffee shop A. That's a minor change, right? The coffee is broadly the same, but we're moving over to one place because it's better for the world. And the more you do that, coffee shop B has to up their game as well because they're losing customers and business is business. They need to do that. So then you start to change behavior on a micro scale that really scales up and you encourage businesses to do good because they're going to have to because consumers have gone in the way. So we start thinking about all the transactions that happen around the world, that two trillion interactions. How can we make them better and make you understand and engage with just the decisioning, that sustainable point, like the decisioning around what am I buying? Where am I buying it? Then yeah. on top of that, we do the, so what? So how can we use that as a trigger to fund the projects around the world? So our North Star is we want to flow a billion dollars to our project. So we, we work bird conservation. We work with lion conservation, elephant conservation, plastic, the ocean, carbon credits, et cetera. We want to give our projects the best in the world, the billion dollars, because that is how we're going to give those people a real opportunity who are experts in their fields to do good stuff. Oh, it's not me, not me, not me doing all this stuff. I just want to give the best people in the world the tools they need to do the good stuff. I'm just a uh, con. I love it. Like one of my favorite places in the world is Laos. Yeah. And then the reason why Laos became so in it's just like inside my heart is because I went to an elephant sanctuary. But if you go to many places in Thailand, they take you to an elephant sanctuary that is very touristy. This mm. one, it's also touristy, <laughs> but it's in the middle of the jungle and the elephants are free. And then I got to trek properly in between the elephants and we were like, like close and I fell in love with the elephants. And then after my trip, I was like, I want to adopt an elephant. Yeah, it's like, how much does it cost to adopt an elephant? I love what you're doing. It's a really interesting thing. There's a whole uh, behavioral psychology around victim bias. So because you understand it and you care about it, because you've seen elephants, you really feel it, you're more willing to engage in the conversation. So we think about a carbon footprint. Quite, if I asked you to draw your one ton of carbon footprint, good luck. If I asked you to draw an elephant, you draw a pretty good elephant. But then, so I care about the things I understand. So we might engage with you as a consumer because we're talking about the elephant you care about. It gives me the right to talk to you about carbon footprint because you're already engaging in the topic. I can start moving over to another conversation, but I've given the right to engage you to have a better conversation around broader topics. It's quite very, interesting. Very smart. Thing when we talk about sustainability. It's a, it's a broad thing. There's biodiverse impact. There's carbon footprint. There's lots and lots of ways. But how can I engage with you and find the right thing that's right for Monica? That makes you passionate about it. and then because if you see that and you care about the elephants and then you see the next thing you'll really care about that as well because you will because you care about elephants you've got that human connection and we're on and try and move that conversation over and get that people in that right space is it's a challenge but it's certainly one that we're going for yeah i think i got my i got ahead of myself talking about the elephants whenever people talk about elephants i'm like oh yeah but then you can work the project with us in tusk yeah, yeah i would love to but now coming back to today. So actually, this is a very relevant question for you and I. When you and I started working in FinTech, 2013, 14, it was just the beginning of FinTech, right? Yeah. And there was this narrative that it's like, hey, banking is broken and uh, we're here to basically have good impact people's lives is the other financial stress. However, FinTech has evolved rapidly in the past 10 years, a ton. Like the industry is so different right now. It's so different. 
However, I have this hypothesis that as much as we have had impact, because we have had, the amount of impact that we've had compared to the size of the problem statement is not big enough. So if we use the next 10 years and have the same amount of impact that we've had in these past 10 years, we're doomed. So I believe we should accelerate our thinking and start thinking about how we can have five times or 10 times more impact in the next five years time, not, not in the distant future. What's your yeah. take? How can we do that? I, I agree with you. I, I think I agree with you, like, the actual impact. I think that we're evolving though from when we were at Tandem was very much us versus them, right? Fintechs versus banks. That was it. And, and you fight and do the banks think we can actually change the world or not? Generally, they didn't think we could do anything. We were just a little website somewhere and it'd be done. That has changed and evolved. And I think now fintechs are enabling banks to do what banks should do, but can't do for all the reasons I've, I've worked in banks for a long time. They can't do it for lots of reasons that it's very sensible and pragmatic reasons why they can't do some of the things they want to do. Now we as a fintech industry can partner with those people who already have hundreds of millions of consumers and start to empower them to do good things, whether it's about financial well-being or sustainability or about inclusivity, whatever it might be. We can be here to work with bank financial services who, who are already big. And I feel like there's a dynamic change that's happened, which is very open to that big conversation and inclusive. I mean, you know, I've seen all the big financial institutions have their own accelerators, varying degrees of success, but at least are talking about it and looking to embrace. And I think if we're going to change the speed at which we are making an impact, it needs to be with the people who already have all of the money and all of the customers and work together on problems. And they need to, big banks need to kind of embrace fintechs at an accelerated pace and kind of use us, test us. We're happy to jump in and test stuff on your customers in a small segment. That's fine. Customers will like that. And for us as a fintech industry to go the other way and go to the banks and go, let's do this. I don't need to do it on my own. You've got all these people. You've got all the customers. You've got all the opportunity. Can we help you to solve this other problem over here and do it together? Nothing. Yes. That's where if we're going to accelerate it. It's combining those two worlds together faster and testing things out faster that we'll see real success. Yeah. And I'm, what I'm hearing is, and we need to be open-minded on both sides. Totally. No, I don't mind open to failure, I think is an interesting one. Fintech world, I don't think we're open enough to failure still. I think on LinkedIn, I think we are because I like to tell everyone I am. In reality, I don't think anywhere near as we like to portray it. And big banks, again, right reasons, FCA regulated, et cetera, very averse to failure and trying things out that don't work. If we could change that, be open-minded and accepting and let's go, let's try. Let's not go and shoot people down for trying something that didn't work. That would be a big cultural shift. I think it'd be brilliant if we could get there. I don't know how to do that bit. But really no. Yeah, but it is so true. Like I just came back from Dubai. I was in Dubai FinTech Summit yeah. and I loved it. But it's, I think what I loved the most about it was the mindset of the prominent speakers running the country and the big unicorns, all, all the speakers. They were very risk equals opportunity. Their mindset was like another level outside. Yeah. Good, because then that gives this energy exactly. Oh, let's go yeah. for it. Let's try to see because risk equals opportunity. It's not a risk equals failure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then, you know, the more we see that kind of behavior, the better. Because then you know those things all come together and actually mean. The velocity gets up and we three or four X the velocity because we're trying stuff, we've been open minded, we're taking more gam, taking more risks. So if we were to do those changes, we're open minded and we are open to failure slash risk and we embrace opportunities. How do we know we've reached like change, significant change in 10 years' time? What are the things that we would measure that will tell us, guys, you did well? Yeah. I think that's a really good question. So if I talk, I'll talk about from a sustainability point of view, because I think I have, I have a pretty clear view on it. if we've done this well, people will know their impact of what they do and they will say they're engaging in it and they understand it and they're doing something about it. 
if we could get to 90% of the population, have financial services, then are able to do this and engaging it and stand up. That'd be it because the purpose isn't fintech. The purpose is much bigger than that. And fintech is an enabler to help you make better choices. That would be a great outcome to get to where people around the world understand it and engage in it. And then you've got a whole different question about how do we actually make you act and make you behave and make you do all the great things. But once you're engaged, you're a long way down that journey. Yeah. I like that. It's engagement, basically. Yeah. Just engage in it. Understand um, it. Engage in it. Yeah. Okay. So now, if I go back to you and Echo, can you slow down again and tell us what's the actual problem statement that you're solving for? Because exactly, sustainability is huge. Carbon, it's, it's such a big problem that I'm sure you're focusing on a subset of problems. Yeah. The fundamental problem that is the kind of where we build, build Echo from, or even the hypothesis is that businesses, banks, financial services, payments, businesses want to do good. The board want the business to do good. The shareholders want the business. The employees of that business want to do good. And then you got the other side coin saying customers all want to do good in this conversation. And the theory behind Echo is that you've got to be that kind of middle bit which connects those two worlds to mean they can, both sides of that can do exactly what they want, which is do good when you're doing transactions, when you're doing payments, or just more broadly in life. I want to work on things that are good to the world. I want to interact with brands that are good for the world. And the way our product comes in is that we connect those two things up, which means when you as a business are running your business and your customers are buying stuff or doing stuff or transacting or interacting, whatever it might be, our platform can use that moment as a force for both of you to do good. That's what we're here for, is that both you and your consumer can do good in that moment of that interaction between your two kind of things, consumers and brands. So who are your customers then? So we are a B2B to C business. Yeah. Ultimately, the C is the people who generally choose to act and do stuff and change the behavior. So we always think about the C. The B is our conduit to get to the C. So how do I get businesses to engage to allow their customers who want this and make it easy for them to deploy their customers? So we work a lot on how do we make our clients, how do we make it easy for our businesses, our clients to deploy our technology to their end consumer? Because consumers, the one we want to get to, we've got to go through the businesses to get there. We have two, two customer groups, for example. When it comes to the banks, payment companies, businesses, the, the B side of it, all the effort is on how do I make this effortless for you to do something to deploy it in? And then we spend a lot of time thinking about how do I make sure your customers are super engaged in the activity? Because then you're solving the business problem and the end consumer generally is anyone who digitally interacts, normally it's digital with any kind of purchase, so digital uh, banking or lots of e-commerce purchasing, whatever it might be. Those people and then the people there, that's up to care about impact, which is the vast majority of us care about what you're doing. We don't really segment our final consumer by demographic significantly because what we found is generational responsibilities are very different as well. Grandparents really care because they realize what it means for their grandkids. And then the middle generations care because we're in the middle of this whole thing. And then the younger generations super care because their future life that I'm literally building the life that I'm going to be living. Yeah. So we don't really split on that way. It's more the mindset and the personality of give people the choice to do a good thing. Generally, they'll do a good. I like that. But then uh, this is where I love talking to people in different regions as such. In, I feel in Asia, the sustainability proposition, other than in Singapore, is still booming. It still hasn't yeah. even been born. It's in the infancy stage. But in Europe, like... People are just demanding this product. So it's with that lens that I'm asking, because the audience has, I have people in both sides of the world, yeah. right? So what are the pain points that the B2B cost, B2B, yeah, your B2B customers would have, or the pain points that consumers would have that then made them say, hey, we need this proposition. Yeah. So I think you're right about the different kind of geographies over different paces that the bet we're making that over the next kind of five, 10 years, everyone will be in this space. 
I've got to believe that's what we're going to get to. Just I need to believe, yeah, that is, we'll get there. And it was at their own pace for various different reasons, but we'll get there. The fundamental pain point that businesses tend to have, banks, for example, so have sat in a number of different boardrooms, is sustainability is often perceived as a few problems with it. One, it costs money to do it, which is a massive myth that needs busting because um, it doesn't. It can actually make you money, direct and indirect. Good business is good business. If you're doing good in the world, the other part, the business point of view is how do I know what's happening is actually happening? So if I fund lion conservation, if I fund reforestation, if I fund plastic right in the ocean, how do I know that's happening? Because big finance institutions have a real rightly fear about saying they do something and they're not actually doing it. That's a massive problem there. If you're sitting in the boardroom, you care about your corporate risk and your reputation and being exposed to greenwashing is a real problem yeah that's kind of one area we think a lot about so how do we make that? so one we can make quite money which is great but more interestingly we make sure that every activity you do with echo is traced with the world leading providers so we can trace a plastic bottle that's saved in well, the beaches in bali recycle and put around some fish in the shelves down the ocean we can trace that impact bridge then from a consumer point of view You've just got to look at the data that shows you across all segments of all kind of areas, people want to move to brands that are engaging, things that are relevant to them and that they care about. You can look at it in financial services, you can look at it in clothes, you can look at it in food. People care in different, again, different geographies, but where my food come from? I really care where it's come from. I don't, I don't want it to be flown over the world or anything like that. I want it to be local produce because that's good for the world and good for my local community. So those two things come together that there's not a lack of want in the space. No one doesn't want to do good. No one we speak to ever says, I don't care about sustainability. I don't want to do this. They're not interested. Like that's just not a thing. Consumers did not think. The problem is actually just solving the barriers, which are as a business, it costs me money. Nope. Takes too long. Nope. Can't trace my impact. Nope. None of that's relevant. We can do all of that stuff for you. And as a consumer, it's too hard to do it. Nope. We can do it in one click too hard to find the space. Okay. All your brands are doing it. So it's just knocking down the barriers is the problem. Not how do I encourage you to do it? Yeah. I was about to ask something, but you just gave me the answer, I think, but I'll ask it anyways. Ah. So thinking about the different geographies that I said that in Asia, I still don't see at least Southeast Asia, I still don't see that boom like we see it in Europe. What is your hypothesis on what will it take to make that shift? I don't think it's, I definitely don't think it's one thing. Generally speaking, the more you get to see the results on your doorstep, people you care about, that tends to obviously hit home more. Uh, and not all geographies are actually going to see that on their doorstep for in the next five years. So I think there are different ways to tackle it. One is maybe it doesn't need more government regulation in, the, in different geographies to support the conversation. I think Dubai is an example of that, who have raised that conversation and therefore we're doing it. And generally, again, like lots of things, creating awareness through talking about it, bring COP to the area, get local politicians, local businesses to engage in the topic. I think that's another way that we can work. I don't think there is a silver bullet. I think there's a silver bullet. Someone would have pulled it by now. That's the wrong reference, but you know what I mean? Yeah, but I think, yeah, I think you, you answered this in, in your previous answer. That's why I was like, oh, you just answered the question, right? But, but not, it's very nice that you paraphrased it. But I want to go back to something that you said earlier about myth busting, that sustainability mm. is expensive. But then because you would say, hey, it's about awareness. Hey, it's about regulation. The other one, it's uh, we know how this world works, right? It's about the right incentives. So yeah. are there like certain commercials around this that you're like, hey guys, it makes sense to do it from a commercial perspective because of ABCD. And then yeah. you're like, oh, let me check it out. Yeah. So I think that's a massive part of it is to tackle the, the impression that people have, which is sustainability costs me money. That's a cost. I've got 3% to grow my revenue line, whatever it might be. We have different commercial models with our partners that change that. Generally, when you work with us, the business case pays for itself within three months because we have direct revenue opportunities, indirect revenue opportunities, all that. So it really works. Now, interestingly, what it's doing is solving the myth 
but most brands don't want the revenue, which is interesting. So they what pass, you're doing pass is pass it over to customers. Give it back to customers, give it back to projects, give it back to impact. So it's really interesting. It's more of a solve the problem which says, I don't want to have this kind of multi-million pound challenge. But now you've told me that I can do it and do it quickly and it can make revenue. That's great. I actually don't want to make revenue off this. I don't want to. I want to go and do more good with it or invest in the product or do all this amazing stuff with it. But we've solved the myth, which is the one that's better in your head, the going, yeah, no, because it just costs money. It doesn't drive growth or all that kind of stuff, which isn't true. So it's a really interesting one because you solve the problem and you realize that wasn't really the problem in the first place. The problem was a historic thing that says this really isn't going to change the world. And ironically, it is actually going to change the world. That is a surprising moment that I was not expecting. Yeah, it's very, well, not all brands, but once have their option and different things, but yeah, quite a lot of brands don't want it. That is cool. So again, coming back to what you said, that we need to reach customers on the emotional side, something that they care about, rather yeah. than talking them about like carbon, because we cannot visualize that. We do care about, not all of us, but many of us, we do care about nature yeah. and animals. Can you tell me about the Planet Saver account? You were in the news recently. Yeah, Planet Saver. So this is a, we partnered with BLME in the UK and a cash management product called Oconee. And it's a savings product. And this is another example of monetary flows where you can use it to do something good effortlessly as an end consumer. So if you, you think about your consumer point of view, I want my money to do good. How can I do that? partner with BLME and Nikoni to launch what's called the Planet Saver, where you can divert 1% of your interest into the Planet Positive Project, carbon credits with Gold Standard or animal conservation with Tusk or plastic from entering the ocean, all these amazing things. So you put your money in the savings account, you get a really good rate of interest, and then some of that interest or equivalent of it will go to these projects. And then at the end of your kind of month or quarter or year, whatever your product savings you've taken, you get to see the impact your money's had and the positive impact. It's, it's a really nice way of passively doing good and seeing the impact and seeing how money can force for good. Because interest is another interesting psychological question. Of, it was never, your, you didn't have it. There's the whole thing around giving money is one thing, but diverting money that I never had anyway, if it was coming to me is quite an interesting concept. And you still get a good rate of interest anyway. So what we're really trying there is understanding whether that passively works for consumers, for businesses, for corporates who can put money away, make return and do good at the same time. That's a certainly interesting thing. So yeah, so we launched that in the UK a couple of months ago, maybe. Yeah. I am not going to say this because we're friends, but I've been following you, of course, for a long time. And I've seen that you've been, you won awards, the, the other, but I think the many people that I've spoken before, your solution is really different. Like it is, you are doing good that multiplies itself by doing more good. It's not only that you are enabling fintechs and big banks to build that awareness and being the enabler, but at the same time, it's a, like you said, there's examples of your customers who then say, yeah, I've made all this money. I don't want to keep it. I want to give it back to the community to give more. And then there's the customers, right? That it's like, hey, and you have this good account that, yeah, it's giving you interest, but at the same time, it's not all for me. Like I want to give part. So by doing this business, you're having like, ooh, a massive ripple effect. That's super cool, Ali. Thank you, Monica. Firstly, that's really kind. Thank you so much. And, and you touched on me. I don't even told people earlier this. What you've landed on there is exactly why we call it Echo. It echoes out. So you make a transaction one moment and it echoes around the world. And that's why some of our branding was kind of the echoing of it. And it really interesting you said that because that's exactly what we wanted to is uh, one moment can echo around the world. I'm sold. I'm your fan. Yeah, you want these t-shirts soon. You know? Yes, please. Yes, please. Not only as a friend, but like as a genuine fintech person. <laughs> and I think this is the right moment to ask and to say, you recently closed around. Congrats. So thank can you, you tell us more about it? Like super well deserved. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's hard. It's a hard market. Yeah. We closed an investment round. This is a really exciting time for us. So 
some brilliant investors joined the team, brought into the mission of what we're trying to do. Also understanding the scale of this kind of transactions around the world and the opportunity to flow the billion dollars to our projects, which is really exciting. Yeah, the investment for us is about now, how do we build more really skilled, create a bigger team with highly skilled people and individuals. We've got some incredible announcements coming up around people who are joining Echo Team, iconic names in the industry who, have, who understand what we're trying to do and can come in and go, yeah, we, we figure out how we can deploy this all the way around the world, which is amazing. And then building quicker routes to market with products, right? So it's always, as you'll know, when you work with banks and financial services, it's how can we just make that faster? Like you can integrate us in four hours, but how can you do it in one hour? How can you do it quicker? How can you make the test and learn much quicker? That's really it for us. Because again, we want to knock down that barrier of it's hard to do this third on the product roadmap. The product roadmap has really deep. I don't know, really I don't know many late <laughs> <Yes. to> <laughs> Very easy to say, oh, do you mind if I just put the top of the roadmap? No, I'm going there. Maybe we can make it quicker for you to do it and all the benefits. Okay, then we're not talking. This is a really exciting moment for Echo, for sure. It's how do we go for it? We are now really in that global scale, and which is super exciting. Yeah, I'm genuinely very happy for you. And it's Thank amazing you. to see that it's like you're ha making so much good. And then now people are supporting you to go and make good. Thank you very much. Um, so as we approach towards the end of the episode, people, our listeners, our fintechers want to get involved in the podcast as such. So now they are asking me to ask questions on their behalf. So I have a question from you for the question from the community. We have from Ara. He actually, he was in the podcast before. So it's Ara Abrahamjan. He's a board member and advisor at Ameria Bank and Cognize. And he asks, what could be your ideal board member or advisor? And what do you want to receive and what not to receive from your board members? Good question. So history of Echo is we are, you know, there are four, four of us who started to co-found the business. We've always been a team of people who listen and collaborate. And ever since day one, we've built a team of advisors around us. Mm -hmm. Always. Because we always listen. We're not here. There's no kind of meritocracy in terms of views or opinion. It's a, you like it. It's opinions that matter and bring advisors in. The best advisors we've had by a long shot are those people who proactively lean in. Loads of people can put advisors on advisor to XYZ FinTech or XYZ startup. That's great. Me as a CEO, co-founder and the whole team, I've got a million and one things I'm trying to get through. Don't necessarily rely on me to come out to you and ask you for a specific advice. I will do that. But what's more helpful is actually the advisor leaning in going, how can I help you with this? I've got this idea, or I've spoken to this person for you. This is an opportunity. Because that's where we need help to kind of multiply it, is be proactive and lean in. There are a few advisors in our team who have done that and are, have been absolutely exceptional, like game change for us in nearly every sense. And they're almost part of the team full time in the sense that they just help them to contribute proactively. That's my one, one thing I'd ask for any advisor is lean in and don't wait for us to come and ask you for help. They have a conversation for us and tell us you've had it and here's an opportunity or here's a thought process and here's some work for you. That'd be it. Love it. And then one of my favorite questions that it's the closing, closing question. It's a bit wrong. If you could change one thing in fintech to make fintech better and have positive impact to customers, employees, and investors, what could it be? It would be, let's talk, I think, can we have two? Let's start with one. And Let's then we can expand on two. We have time. Yeah. The biggest thing we can do, I think, is, like I said earlier, let people fail and genuinely help them. Mm -hmm. It's not a thing. It's not a stigma. It's not an underlying stigmatism around you. You failed and that's a bad thing. You never quite got this wrong or the model's hard or blah, blah, blah. Just to make it genuine that when people do, it's amazing that you actually did something. Let's use that and encourage that. And I do think there's a difference between what was posted on LinkedIn and what I hear in different conversations. Yeah. I don't think it's the same. I think if we can align those things, actually we are very pro it and it's a really good thing to have done it and tried it. I think that'll accelerate the whole industry because people will be more willing to have goes and try stuff out, side hustle goes. So that's a good opportunity. That, that'd be my one. I'll stick to one. No, one. No, I know I want to hear the number two. The, the other one, which is just the FinTech with purpose question. Can we just talk about non-FinTech things with FinTech people in the room? Because I think that's a really interesting oh, I love opportunity. That. Can you expand? That, 
or we talk about mental health, or we talk about other things that are going on societally, loads of fintech people in the room, but talk about something entirely different. Because when we think about that, the kind of where Echo came from is we talk about the other thing, and then there are enough fintech nerds in the room and we can figure out ways we can help solve that problem. But don't talk about fintech and that problem. Just talk about that problem. Come on. Let's just spend time talking about that. And new entrepreneurs will come up and come up with new ideas or people who own products in different areas of their are. I'm a product owner for that. I can think about this in a new way. But just talk, talk about the problems away from fintech. I like that. Maybe we'll be a new segment in the podcast. Yeah, we'll talk about something entirely different. And then someone will have an idea and go, I think I can solve it in a totally different way. Cool. Let's do that. Exactly. It's a total different problem statement. Yeah. Health, health, mental health and health, for yeah, example. Yeah, let's talk about that. Someone was going to figure out a good way that we can help FinTech and help them. Love it. Oli, it's been an absolute pleasure reconnecting and having you in the show. Thank you so no much. Thanks. Thank you for having me. Thank you. See you, everyone. See you next week. Bye-bye.